How goes it guys? DadBot Operator here today. I wanted to take a few minutes to make a quick video for you on what to look for in your first gun. If you're anything like me, finding my first gun was really hard. There was so many different options out there and so many different brands that were available and it seemed like the more research I did, the more questions I had. So I wanted to take a few minutes today just to, to make a video to go through a few tips, tricks, and, and, and things that I think would help pick out a first good handgun. So first and foremost, the most important thing is a good first gun has to be multi-role capable. What that means is it has to be good at both home defense and everyday carry. <clears throat> so it has to work well carrying it around outside with you and work well defending your home. A great example of a good multi-role gun is a Glock 19. This is a Glock 19 Gen 4. It makes a great multi-role gun because it has a good sized uh, sight acquisition here on the front. It has a 15 round capacity, so good capacity. And it also has a spot in the front to mount a light. This happens to be a Streamlight TLR7. Uh, great for home defense. If the lights go out, this guy casts a pretty good beam up around the house for you. Uh, another thing to think about is capacity. Uh, capacity is super important whenever choosing your first handgun because you're really not going to be that great at shooting whenever you first get it, and you need every round you can get, uh, to be quite honest with you. So a great example of a good gun with good capacity is a Springfield Hellcat. This little guy is one of the smallest guns on the market with only a three inch barrel, but despite its diminutive size, it has a 13 round magazine and an 11 round magazine. That's fantastic capacity for such a small gun. Another thing uh, th to think about is something that most people don't think about very often, and that's holster compatibility. There are tons of different guns on the market, but unfortunately not many people make holsters for all of them. So you can go and buy a really cool gun like an HK VP9, go into your local gun shop to find a holster, and there's one option. That's why I always recommend going into your local gun shop though first, because if you get a fairly common gun, there's a good chance that you'll have at least a couple of different holsters available. Uh, I recommend finding something that's gonna be comfortable to carry, something that is very ergonomic, and something that doesn't hurt you to carry around all day because there's nothing worse than trying to carry your gun and it digging into your side the whole time. Uh, a really good first holster is an Alien Gear holster. This is the Alien Gear uh, that I utilize for my Glock 19. It has a really soft padding on the back. It has a leather-like substance on the front and a Kydex sheath for your gun. It has a really nice uh, attachment points on the sides and it gives you the ability to kind of wrap around your body. So if you wear it on the side, like on your three o'clock position, you're able to wrap it around there without it, without it hindering your ability to move. Uh, something else to consider is whether or not to run a red dot on your gun. There are a lot of guns these days that come with a red dot on the gun, but a really good option is to get a gun that is red dot ready, but doesn't have one on it. A great example of that is the FN 509 mid-sized MRD. This one actually has a red dot on it, but it didn't come that way. It came with a spot there in the front where you can add a red dot. I put about a thousand rounds through this first, making sure that I got used to acquiring the sights. And then I put a red dot on it because quite honestly, if it's your first gun, trying to line up a red dot is a lot more deceptively difficult than you would think it would be. So you want to have the option and be able to add one at some point in time later down the road, but I don't recommend starting off with one. So you want to make sure that it is red dot capable. And that's a great example of that, the FN. Another thing is reliability. What's the point of having a, a, a handgun if it's not going to work when you need it? So you want to make sure you get something that's reliable and reputable. A great option for those is any of the major manufacturers, Sig Sauer, uh, Glock, H&K, CZ, they all make great carry guns and they're all really reliable. Um, the thing you can do to ensure your gun is reliable is take it to the range when you get it. Most guns don't come broken in already, so you have to go put at least a couple hundred rounds through them first to make sure that they're going to operate properly 
And you want to make sure that you're going to be shooting the personal defense ammo that you're going to be carrying. Just because you buy really expensive personal defense ammo doesn't mean it's going to run in your gun. And you won't know that until you go and try it out. So I always recommend whatever gun you go with, taking it to the range and popping a couple hundred rounds through it. It's going to be expensive because personal defense ammo always is. But what's more expensive? The ammo you put through your gun or it not going bang when you need it to? Another thing to think about is the price. There are price ranges on guns everywhere from $150 all the way up to $4,000, just depending upon the model and the features. So price range is really kind of more subjective to the person. You got some cheddar, you can buy a nicer gun. If you don't, you can still buy a good gun, but you don't have to, you can't, you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. Uh, another really good price range gun is the Glock 48. The Glock 48 is a fairly new gun. It's only been out within the last three or four years, I believe. But this gun is everything you would want in a first handgun. And it was only like 450 bucks. So it's really a really great mid-range gun and gives you everything you would need uh, for a good price. Another really serious thing to consider is what caliber you're going to go with. There are so many different calibers out there. There's 5.7 caliber, there's 4.6 caliber, there's 10 millimeter, there's 40 cal, there's 45, there's 9 millimeter. So many different options out there. I recommend picking one and sticking with it. Personally, I went with 9 millimeter because I believe that to be the best option. It gives you the most capacity. Uh, it has good knockdown power these days with all the different plus P ammo options available to you. Uh, and I like to just stick with one round and be done with it. That way I know if I go in my safe and I need to grab a box of ammo, that if I grab it and pull it out, it's going to be 9 millimeter. So whatever round caliber you go with, stick with it. But I personally uh, recommend 9 millimeter. Another thing is the size uh, consideration of the person carrying the gun. So if you're a, a little bit larger person, it may be hard to carry a smaller gun. Vice versa, if you're a little bit smaller person, it may be difficult to carry a larger gun. Um, and your body type is also important too. So if you kind of have a dad bod like I do and you got a little bit of a muffin top, it might be hard to carry a, a larger gun because it may not conform to your body. Uh, same with a smaller size person. Carrying a smaller gun or a larger gun may not work too well for you. So you have to make sure that you take that in consideration when choosing your gun. Uh, something else that's super important, guys, and I think this is one of the most important things, don't buy it until you shoot it. There are so many different gun ranges out there these days that have tons of guns available for rent. I recommend going, picking out five of the most favorite ones you researched, putting a couple hundred rounds through each, and then making your decision based off of that. Uh, don't ever buy something and then just assume it's going to work for you. There's nothing worse than spending $500 on a gun, which is a lot of money, getting it home, taking it out, shooting it, and realizing that the recoil is too much, or that it hurts your hand, or that the, the grip isn't what you wanted it to be. Once you bought it, it's yours. Uh, gun shops don't take, don't do refunds and they don't really buy used guns back. They will, but you're not going to get your money back that you put into it. So I recommend going to a, a, a range, renting a few guns, and finding something that really works for you. Another serious consideration here, guys, is any gun is better than no gun. So if you can't afford a high-end gun, if you can't afford a, you know, a really expensive gun, then go and buy a gun. A high point is better than nothing. A high point's around 150 bucks and it gives you the ability to protect yourself regardless. I would probably recommend saving up for a little bit longer and getting around $300. That gives you the ability to buy at least a used Glock Gen 3 or something in that range, uh, which I believe would probably be a little more reliable and probably more to your liking of most people. But if you can't afford that and you gotta have something now and you got 150 bones on you, drop it on a high point. The final thing 
when considering a new handgun is everything is a trade-off. If you buy a big gun, it's going to be hard to carry. You buy a small gun, it's going to be super snappy to shoot. If you buy a large capacity gun, it's going to be really bulky. If you buy a smaller capacity gun, you better be a good shot because it's going to be harder to, to, to shoot. So everything is a trade-off, so there is no perfect gun. Find something that works best for you and go with it. There are great options out there, guys. Like I said before, there is a Hellcat. Uh, Springfield makes a, a great micro compact. Um, my wife's carry gun is one of the best ones on the market. This little guy has kind of made my Glock 19 obsolete. This is a Glock 48. Uh, it is the basically a miniature Glock 19. And we made it into that by adding a 15 round shield magazine to it. That basically gives you the capacity of a Glock 19 and the size of a Glock 43. It's a great, great first handgun. Couldn't recommend it enough. Again, if you can't really afford to go to that, you can always go with a used Glock of, of some kind. Um, if you really just want something basic, you can always go with a Smith & Wesson M&P. This came out long before the stack and a half micro compact craze, but it's still a great little gun. It's got an eight round capacity. Um, it's a single stack, uh, and these days they're right around 250 bucks, I think, so it's a great deal for the money. Uh, the only problem with this guy is it has a safety on it. That's something else that you would want to take into consideration, whether or not you want to have a safety. I borrowed this gun, but none of mine have safeties. Uh, I would recommend against one because until you've trained a, a thousand rounds through a gun and pulled it a thousand times and taken that safety off every time, then in the moment you need it, your muscle memory is going to pull and pull the trigger and not take the safety off. So I usually recommend a gun without a safety. Um, that be, all being said, the gun that I carry the most nowadays, the FN 509 MRD. Great handgun because it checks so many boxes. It's got a great sight radius. It does come with the optic cut. has a 15 round magazine that comes with it, but I actually upgraded to a 17 round magazine. Um, it, the coolest part about it is it has ambidextrous controls. So if I'm right handed, I can drop the magazine. I'm left-handed, I could drop the magazine. There's no need to switch the magazine release over from one side to the other. Slide release is the same. It's got it on both sides, so it doesn't matter what hand you are, it's completely ambidextrous. Uh, this checks so many boxes for me, guys, and that's why I carry this every day. The only thing that I really don't like on it is the trigger. I've put about a thousand rounds through this gun, and I keep thinking to myself, one of these days, this trigger is gonna be awesome, and it is anything but awesome. Is super grainy and I uh, really need to take care of that. I think I'm going to switch it out here pretty soon. But that's it, guys. Those are the recommendations that I have. Um, like I said, no perfect gun, no perfect solution. Any gun's better than no gun. What guns do you guys choose for your first guns, guys? Comment below. Uh, let me know what you did. I'd love to get a conversation going on it. Uh, any questions that you have, feel free to ask them in the comments below as well. Please like and, and subscribe, guys. We're trying to get this channel going up and running here. Uh, really want to get a good community of good people together to uh, to discuss guns and, and uh, just have a good time. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great night.